today's episode, entrepreneur in the food industry, Bobby Parr. Hey, Mike, come on in. Um, I'm Bobby Parr. I started Parr Jars in 2020 um, as a direct response to COVID. I could see that some of the restrictions that were coming into place were probably going to have an effect on the supply chain. So we start, decided to start a local food business to connect producers and consumers and try to just get the local food movement running and get ahead of the problem. Um, I went to school at University for Community Development. Uh, and because of what was happening with COVID and everything, I thought the best, uh, one of the biggest challenges that we were probably going to face was going to be um, food insecurity. Just with, at the time when it all started, I had seen that the truckers were, they didn't have anywhere to go to the bathroom and they were concerned that they might end up striking. So just thinking through that big of a problem and what would happen if our supply chain started breaking down, it just made me realize that our community was quite vulnerable here and it was essential to just start getting the ball rolling to make sure that things were happening. Um, so my community development really helped in that because I did the grassroots um, stream for community development. So it's just a matter of getting to know the people, figuring out what it is that's really gonna be needed and then trying to grow things from the ground up. Uh, definitely a lot. I, I've, I really like to get my hands in everything. So when I had the opportunity, I sort of took everything and ran with it. So I grow indoors and outdoors. So we do microgreens, hydroponics, and I have a garden. Um, I work in the kitchen. So I'm a cook. We make soups, um, a lot of snacks. So we'll try to make healthy snacks, usually sugar free. We take things like rhubarb, which is grown locally, and then we'll use maple syrup to make a compote rather than use sugar. Uh, same with sweet seeds, rather than having a granola bar that's full of sugar, we'll try to do sweet seeds with maple syrup and smoked cinnamon to give that extra flavor without the sweetness. Uh, so kitchen work, um, grower, teacher, we do workshops here in the kitchen. So we'll teach people things like uh, fermenting, pressure canning, water bath canning, that type of stuff. Uh, food dehydrating, just all type of, the last course that we did was principles of, of um, preservation. So we taught people how to do all of that. So I'm a teacher. When you own your own business, you have to be your own marketer, your own salesman. Um, you have to be your own financial person um, to keep track of all of the expenses that are going in and out. So thankfully I've had a little help in that area, a little bit of support because it's difficult to wear all of those hats at once. But uh, so I've had quite a few jobs since starting this and I've loved each and every one. So. I, I really love the impact that I think it's making. I think just being able to get in and grow the local food movement when things are feeling pretty insecure gives me gives me a sense of um, community responsibility, individual responsibility. So it makes me feel really good knowing that there's an impact, that I'm helping people build their self-sufficiency, I'm helping them gain access to local food. A lot of people don't realize how much money you spend on food for one and how much of an impact that makes when it is local. So when you support a local business and a local farmer, both of those people are much more likely to spend their money locally. And when you spend it locally, there's a concept called economic leakage. So when you spend it, say that you go to Walmart and you spend a dollar, 85 cents of that dollar ends up going immediately after you spend it, it goes out of the community and it doesn't stay here. 15% stays here and that's usually in the form of wages. Um, but when you spend with a local business, 85, it's actually the exact reserve, uh, reverse. 85% stays in the community and not only that it continues to recirculate because local people really understand the importance of spending locally as well so that not only does that 85 cents of your dollar stay in town then 85 cents of the next dollar spent from that entrepreneur stays there and so on and so on so it really compounds and the impact is incredible so that's really what I love about this job and being able to build community I think that it's really going to make a difference in the times to come. Um, so in this field or in just entrepreneurship in general, uh, I think organization is really key. Being able to create systems and then organize those systems. Uh, passion is very important, especially when you're talking about the food business. Margins aren't very big, so a margin would be how much profit you actually get out of a product. Um, it's not very big when it's in the food business, so most people really need a lot of passion to be able to make this work. They want to love it, and they do it a lot for the lifestyle more than anything, being able to be surrounded by that food. 
and um, a vision. Vision is probably another thing that's really important, especially with all the problems that we're facing today in the systematic um, situations that we're in. If you have a lot of vision, you're able to think outside the box and really tackle some of those problems, then we can come to some complex, you know, deal with these complex problems. And usually it's just simple solutions, but you need to be able to sort of tear down the barriers and think outside the box and have that vision to make that work. I think one of the problems though, of having all three of those things. So when you talk about organization, vision, and passion, usually you're not gonna find all three of those things in one person. So if you're a visionary and a passionate type person, you're generally not gonna be very organized because it's sort of a yin and a yang. So you need to know um, as an entrepreneur how to figure out how to backfill those things. So because I'm not very organized, I know I need to be organized, but I'm not. I find uh, some people who can support me in that, whether that means an employee or a reliable volunteer, so that you know that you can get that under wraps, even if you sort of have a little bit of a deficit, then you can, you can make sure that you have a well-rounded business. I think, I think as an entrepreneur and, and any business owner, and really, really in, in any job that allows you the flexibility, if it's a job that you really want to be creative, especially, um, those are all going to come in handy. So the passion and the vision, if you have a creative opportunity, having those things will really help you come to a good solution. Um, organization is pretty much key in any job, any field that you want. If you can manage to figure out how to, how to organize yourself, and have um, systems for your operations, then you're more likely to, to make a greater impact. And when you're organized, you're able to find the time to, um, to capitalize on opportunities. So a lot of opportunities come your way, but if you're feeling swirly and you're feeling all disorganized, you're not really gonna be able to jump on any of those opportunities. So being organized just helps in general, I think, with anything.